Hey traders, Akil Stokes here and welcome to another episode of The Trading Blog, episode 40, the big four zero. In today's blog, I want to do something a little bit different. As you can see, I'm also sharing this on the Trade Empowered YouTube page. And the reason being is because in today's blog post, we're gonna do a little bit of technical analysis, meaning we're gonna look at the price charts. And whenever we dig into the charts, I like sharing that on the Trade Empowered YouTube page as well as my own personal page. And we're gonna look at the Australian dollar pair today. I wanna to start off by looking at the daily time frame. And if you guys remember this from a, a few Forex market previews back, this was a pair that I congratulated a lot of traders on. We had a, a very nice cipher formation here on the daily, a big boy pattern that completed right around here. And if you remember, traders who were involved in this trade um, they had to sit through this for about a month and really, you know, bite their nails, grit their teeth and go through the ups and downs of, uh, you know, being in the red, back down to break even, being in the red, back down to break even before finally breaking down and achieving targets. And I got a very nice comment from uh, one of our transformation clients. Uh, she said, hey, Akil, great video as always. You're a great coach. I wanted to share a few. Uh, I want to share for your viewers that I was one of the traders who got involved in the cipher trade on February second. That finally hit targets for me on March 9th, So over a month. Yes, it will forever be a memorable trade. I've never been in a trade for over a month, but it definitely paid off. I can do that now because I have a written trade plan. I've learned to I've learned not to break my rules but to believe in a pattern that I've back tested. I have to give Trade Empowered and the Transformation course a lot of credit. Prior to taking the course, I didn't have a trade plan and certainly hadn't spent any time in front of the charts um, that I've spent in the last six months practicing and back testing, getting up at 5 a.m. to attend the uh, live sessions. Uh, Killing the Trade Empowered staff, you are awesome coaches. Uh, YouTube fans uh, listening to Akil Daily in his live room, hearing and seeing the material taught over and over again, reinforces the learning and has transformed my trading. It's worth any uh, every penny. I appreciate that, Margie. It was a great comment, um, especially the nice stuff said about us. Um, but what I want to take out of it is, again, just the belief and the focus and the discipline. I always say that patience pays, literally, in this uh in this field and for those who are patient man they got a big payday but after that initial rollover right price action you can see price action has rolled up to retest our previous structure high and we came right to a dsr level for you guys that are new uh the big red box right, and, and the green boxes that you're seeing on your screen those are called our dsr levels it's a dynamic support and resistance indicator and it's something that we use and, and work with our clients with to just get more confidence in identifying both major and minor levels of structure. So as price action approached that level, we're asking ourselves, we're going through our IPDE process, identify, predict, decide, execute. And we're asking ourselves, is there any opportunity to get short here? And there were a few opportunities, <clears throat> excuse me, there were a few opportunities actually, and uh, you know, different traders I work with took it different ways. I wanna show you how I approached it earlier in the week, and we're just gonna take us going all the way down to the 60 minute time frame. Now, what I looked for on this pair was a 2618 opportunity. So as price action, zoom out a little bit. As price action came down, right? You can see we came up to retest the highs of that DSR level, and then we put in a double top, right? Price action at test resistance, we were traced off of it, we tested it again. We then broke and closed right below the V point of this double top formation. And what we're looking for when price action does this is a technique or a strategy called the 2618. And what it means is we wanna take our Fibonacci retracement tool, we wanna to measure it from our swing high to our swing low of that last top. And then we're looking in this range, right? We're looking in this range, this 618 retracement, to this top right here as our, our kill zone, right? So our potential reversal zone, the area in which we're looking to get short on price action. Now, I know you're looking at the saying, oh, Akio, look, price passed that level, right? Doesn't that mean you were stopped out of the trade? No. Why? Well, if you're familiar with the rules of this strategy, if you know how to trade it, we know that stop losses need to go above the high of our simple pattern formation. So stop losses need to go above the high of our double top, which is right here. Now, some of you that are still newer are saying, but Akil, price action spiked past that high. 
Well, this is kind of the difference between newer traders, inexperienced or underexperienced traders and more experienced traders, right? We know that the market works in zones, right? We know that a lot of rookie traders, a lot of unexperienced traders, excuse me, make the mistake of seeing a, a structure level and they put stops maybe a pip above it, two pips above it. The market knows that and the market will often test these areas, right? Hunt those stop losses before reversing in the opposite direction. I used to see this a lot when I was a, <laughs> a trader that started off. It would seem like, man, the market always knows where my stop is. It, it makes its way just to my stop, grabs it, and then goes in the opposite direction, right? All the time, all the time. And you have two choices. Either you educate yourself and you do something about it, you, you stop putting yourself in that same position, or you just keep getting eating, uh, keep getting eaten alive by the markets and make excuses for it. So stops need to be above right that double top structure so you can see price action came up right we went into our 2618 zone we we passed it we went really really deep into it really testing the highs i, I like to call it a kiss of death right because price action usually mwah, kisses those rookie stop losses up there and then runs the other way and that's exactly what we did here and you can see we rolled down to achieve target ones right here and then we even went down to achieve secondary targets right or extended targets right down here at our 127 and right down here at our 1618 Fibonacci inversion. This is a or extension, excuse me. Look left, structure leaves clues as well as we came right into our previous outside return. So it was a pretty decent trade here on Aussie dollar to start the week off. And again, for you guys that are in the syndicate, obviously in the syndicate, we only looked at single targets. Um, that's kind of what we've, what we've done in the syndicate over the past few years. It's in my opinion, you always want to test it. In my opinion, it's not the most efficient way or effective way to trade the markets. Um, but our goal in the syndicate isn't to, we trade in the syndicate a little bit different than we trade in our personal accounts. Our goal in the syndicate isn't necessarily to have the greatest return. It's more so to show you guys repetition with trading opportunities. So the quicker we can get in and out of a trade, the more trading opportunities we can show you. So it's a little different of a goal, but I, I recommend testing single targets and multiple targets and, and making a comparison between the two. So it was a good trade to start the week. And then yesterday, right, we looked at another trade. As you can see, price action continued down. Look left, structure leaves clues. We created a lower low, lower close below our previous level of structure. We know what? Lower low, lower close means what? We can make the prediction that price action is likely to continue lower. So what we did was this, and this happened while I was sleeping, so we didn't have a chance to catch this, right? Three o'clock in the morning, fast asleep, right? We put in a retracement, we put in another lower, low, lower close, and then during the day, right, during our live day trading session, we retraced right to this area, and I took another short opportunity right here, and it was an awesome opportunity, right? Got involved almost at the very highs, so imagine right here, targets, initial targets, we're looking at a retest of previous structure lows right down here green where's my green for money right and you can see the risk was very very small right right above previous structure now unfortunately when i woke up this morning right beautiful risk reward right one two three and a half to one right fortunately when i woke up this morning i saw two things First, I saw that uh, yesterday, I saw that I was stopped out on the trade, woke up this morning and saw that price action rolled down to the same predictive level, right? The market did exactly what we were expecting. However, I got stopped out before it happened. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today. And in, in this situation, there are one, or, one of two choices a trader can make. And this is kind of the difference between newer traders that aren't really focused on, on getting better and experienced traders that are focused on the bigger picture. A newer trader will often see this and they'll start yelling at their computer, oh, how do you do that? Why did you just stop me out? And they, they start turning on that hindsight vision. So they look at this and they say, well, you know what? Oh man, I should have put stops here. And come on, I mean, obviously, yes. If you get 100 traders in a room, you show them this situation, guess how many are gonna say you should have put stops right here? every single one right this is what a lot of the the hindsight hindsight traders on youtube do right they watch our videos we're one of the only companies out there that 
provide 100% transparency, right? That means when we do YouTube videos, it's typically live analysis. When we do our live trading room sessions, obviously it's live analysis. When we do our syndicate war room meetings, it's live analysis. We're showing you everything that is live. And when you do that, you put yourself at a lot of risk. Why? Well, because if, if things go well, you're gonna look great, right? You're gonna be the, the king, the savior of all, right? When things go bad, it's going to be embarrassing. And a lot of traders on the internet won't do that. They only wanna come and show you videos like the first half of this, where it's like, hey guys, ha <laughs> ha, 2618, made all this money, ha ha ha, right? Make themselves look good. But that doesn't do anything for the trader, right? That doesn't do anything for the trader just to show winning opportunities. I, I feel, and I'm getting off topic here, I'm sorry. I feel it's important to show transparency, right? Traders will need to see the good, they need to see the bad, they need to see the reality of trading. So when you see a trade like this and everyone comments, or if you share a trade and everyone comments, oh, why don't you put stops there? Of course, that's an obvious, that's an obvious observation when you look at what has already happened. The question is, would there have been any reason to put stops there in real time? So instead of looking at this situation and, and, and being upset with the markets and being upset that you got stopped out and, and playing the woulda, coulda, shoulda game, what you wanna do is you wanna go back through your analysis, right? We call this reviewing the tape. It's kind of like film study, right? You wanna go back through your film study, reanalyze the trade, and just see if there's anything that you could have done better. Was there any reason that I, based off my rules or based off anything, any other observations in the market, were there any reason that I should have put stops up here instead of down here? And many times you're gonna look at your trading situation, it's gonna be like, no, I did everything right and the market just got me. Guess what? That's trading, it's not gonna be the first time, it's not gonna be the last time. But if you do enough of this, maybe you start to put together clues, maybe you start to see, you know, let's say for example, let's say this was an, an even handled number, meaning a, um, a high psychological number like, uh, let's say this was, 80 cents even, right? 80 cents even. So let's say you're you're doing this over and over again. You notice that, man, every time, every time there's a, an even handled number, a psychological number there, price action seems to hit that level, right? And then reverse, right? But my stops are always below that level. Maybe you see that time after time after time. And when you go through your notes, when you do your big trading review, you know, you notice that's a common occurrence. That's when you do something like make the adjustment. Well, maybe I don't want to be below the psychological number. But again, that's just an example. But what makes a trader better isn't looking at it and just telling themselves, well, in hindsight, I'm gonna do this, or next time I'm gonna do that. Because you're just gonna start opening yourself up for more risk, more risk, more risk. And then there's always gonna be that time where price action just barely gets above your stop. And now you're, you're doing that to your risk reward. What a professional trader wants to do is they wanna evaluate the trading opportunity. They wanna evaluate their trade and see if there's anything they could have done better. And throughout that long process of doing that trade after trade after trade, day after day after day, then they can start making small, non-emotional adjustments to their trading plan that maybe put them in um, a better situation in the future. So that's the lesson of today. Don't be so quick to yell at your computer, right? Don't be so quick to be that hindsight trader where you're always right in hindsight because guess what? In hindsight, I would have entered here, I would have entered here, I would have entered everywhere right before the market did whatever I expected. But take the professional approach and start evaluating your trading, right? So hope you guys enjoy. Uh, if you're interested in any, any of the stuff I mentioned uh, before, the DSR levels or learning how to do the 2618 trade, um, here's what I want you to do. Just head over to our website. It's uh, tradeempowered.com. Uh, if I can bring it over here somewhere, too many charts up, tradeempower.com. And uh, just check out what we have here on the site, explore the site, uh, products and services. This is where you can find stuff like live trading rooms, uh, the DSR indicator, um, different training courses that we have, whether it be our syndicate program or our ultimate trader transformation course, uh, even our Forex basics course for you guys that are very, very new. And also click the learn to trade tab. Uh, over here, you'll find some great free workshops into the gray. Uh, 2618, that's what I just showed you. Um, you can learn that strategy just by watching this video. Um, so head over, tradeempower.com, take your time, explore over there, and I'll see you guys uh, next time with another episode of The Trading Blog. All right, traders, so I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please show us by hitting that like button and subscribing by clicking the button right below. If you're looking for more educational content, feel free to head over to our tradeempower.com website, or also take a look 
and you'll see more videos available for you. Have a good one.